1897. And that's a significant period of time for us because and that's a long time to live away from family and friends, but also because it's the decade prior to the reestablishment of Newton in 1999. And so we were witnessing a lot of changes in the Arctic and in the community of Baker Lake, which made our lives very, very interesting. And one of the things that um, I tried to do with the women artists was to get them to capture some of their thoughts, what they felt about Newton, what did it mean to them. And you can see from looking around that um, their statements are very clear in that Nunavut to them is indeed their homeland. This is what defines them as Inuit people, and this is what is important to them. And even though they realized it was slipping away, the traditional life was slipping away very rapidly, they felt that need to document and to preserve those traditions and, and um, memories for posterity. So I think for that, um, we should be eternally grateful to the Inuit Inuit Baker Lake for what they've accomplished. This body of work um, was initially collected in an intuitive way um, because we were the first, much to people's dismay, we were the first to see everything that came in the door to decide what we wanted to keep. Um, we couldn't keep everything, of course, and so you know, we, we chose very carefully and we tried to pick works that reflected that were you know, aesthetically beautiful and pleasing, but that also reflected the artist's personality. And we learned a lot. Uh, I had the privilege of working on an exhibition of Jesse Unark's work prior to going to Baker Lake. So I knew a little bit about this medium. But most of what I learned, I learned from Av Isaac, so I'm so pleased you're here today, Av. Don't frown. <laughs> showed them all the slides of previous works that they had in the, six, in the 70s particularly, and then doled out some leftover material from the sewing shop, which had recently closed, got them to make a whole batch of, of wall hangings, uh, thanks to Al's generosity, he was my banker, my initial banker, um, sent them down to Al, and oh, we were all so excited, and he kept two out of that whole batch, and I thought, what's going on here? <laughs> But you know what, that feedback, that was a really good learning experience for myself and for the ladies because the feedback was that um, the women had to, that they could invest more into their work and that they needn't be hesitant about what it was they were trying to say in their own hands. And so with that feedback, um, you know, shared that with the women and they really took it to heart. And from then on, I think, I don't know how many shows we had, I was trying to remember. How many shows we had at the Inuit Gallery? We had several. I can't even remember sending in the original money. Oh, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I'm all paid up in full. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, um, you know, the, the need for somebody to act as a liaison between the artist and their marketplace is especially crucial in the north. And for us, it was twice removed because they had to work with me, and then I had to work with Av and Pat and uh, other galleries across Canada to try and figure out uh, where to take this meeting. And so, as you can see, the women really rose to the occasion. And the deal was, we were partners. I had a little shop in somebody's warehouse, Forrest Kelsey's warehouse. It started out with a phone and a desk, because you couldn't have a business in your home in Baker Lake if you uh, were in government housing, which we were. And uh, month by month, I kept taking over a little bit more of that warehouse space until I had the whole thing and had a nice little shop. And it became the hub of the community, not only for the artists, but also for collectors, for visitors. I can remember so many of you in that shop. And we won't talk about the time Sandra had a tea cozy on her head. That's okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so many visitors, tourists, um, government people there on, on business, um, construction.
construction workers, the nurses, the RCMP had mold collecting, which was really great for the women and for the, the carvers as well, because it meant um, the difference between poverty and well-being in many cases. So the, the money that they could earn from Interestingly enough, when I did an exhibition of Marion Tudluk's work in 2000, I started doing the research, and I had put together a whole album of photographs of her work, along with the collector's photo. So when I would go into my research, I'd ask the collector if they would find posing with the work, and they were very gracious enough to do that. And Tudluk was so thrilled to know where the work had ended up, who would get a sense of who had it, and she would almost always remember what she purchased was a washing machine, and this one was a skidoo, and like, she just had these, it just brought back all kinds of wonderful memories for her, and it made that connection between the production and then the final uh, exhibition place. So very important for them to, to feel connected. Um, I'm happy to talk about a few of the works, if you wish. Um, all the major artists are represented here, except for Jesse Hart, who passed away and Ruth But the major artists uh, being um, Mary Tupu, um, Naomi Pichi, Elizabeth Enganakia, Arina Nakia, and the um, Mark's daughters, John Pichu, Mary Lucy, Mary Nakia, and a few of the other artists, John So the major artists are represented here. That was one of the things that we tried to do to try to collect at least two works that we thought were stellar. Jim and I would pour a glass of wine. I'd bring all this stuff home, pour a glass of wine, look at these pieces, talk about them. Our son would sometimes get involved, saying what he thought. And, uh, and so we, we were able to put our collection together that way. These works have been widely exhibited. They've been exhibited uh, in Canada, States, uh, Italy, um, Japan. So the women really did build their portfolios and their profiles nationally and internationally in the 10 year period that I was there. Lots of people have asked me which one's my favorite work. I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to see them go. I know both Jim and I were um, quite emotional about um, having this show. Um, as I said in my little write-up, it's bittersweet. Um, the reality is that they're in storage, and so nobody's, nobody's seen them. Nobody has access to them, and it's, it's really time to let them out into the, into the world and have um, people enjoy them. And particularly for future generations, I think the younger people, they're, 